Good afternoon, everyone. This is Simon Volta, the Director of Sales here at V Technologies. Uh, thank you for joining this afternoon and regarding our Starship um, webinar regarding QuickBooks. Um, just a few housekeeping tips I like to start off with before I get into the presentation as well as the demo. Um, if you do have any questions, we will hold on to those until the end um, of the presentation. So we will leave enough time for question and answer. If you do have a question, there is a question pane by your name. Please feel free to jot your question in there and we will address those um, as we complete here this afternoon. <clears throat> Everyone is in listen only mode, um, so no one can speak um, out, unfortunately. Um, so again, if you do have a question, please raise your hand and we will address those at the end. Um, I'm gonna give uh, people here a minute or so to lo keep logging in. Um, and then we'll get started. Um, but again, I welcome you and uh, thank you for taking some time this afternoon to learn more about Starship and the advantages over ship gear and what it can do for you. Okay, I'm gonna get started here. Um, Again, my name is Simon Volt. I'm joined here with Moses Webb, our sales executive for QuickBooks. Um, today, we're really going to take you through a couple of the advantages Starship offers over ShipGear. So some of you on the call might be using our ShipGear solution today, uh, and we appreciate that business. Uh, but we really want to bring um, to light what Starship can do um, over ShipGear to show you some of those advantages, but also really um, kind of take you through the portal um, and really talk a little bit more in detail um, of the different features and benefits. So for those of you new to V-Technologies and our products, uh, welcome. Um, but again, I just wanna give you a little history of who we are. We're located here in Connecticut. Um, we have about 28 years or so now um, of developing software in the shipping industry. Um, Starship has been around since 1989. Uh, we have 15 plus years experience in the Intuit space with QuickBooks. Um, with well over about 10,000 customers uh, across all ERP platforms using our solution in the US and Canada. Um, I do mention um, FedEx and UPS down below because they do offer subsidy programs uh, that customers do take advantage of today. Um, UPS offering their CTP program, as well as FedEx offering their technology incentive program. Uh, if you are interested, I would recommend reaching out to your rep um, to look more into those subsidy programs and how they can help pay for a solution like Starship. <clears throat> Just to highlight a few key differences between the two solutions that we offer. Um, so ShipGear, for those of you using it, um, is really um, utilizing the individual carrier platforms such as WorldShip or Ship Manager. Um, FedEx offering, um, it only offers FedEx and UPS services, <clears throat> so it can't be integrated with any LTL carriers. Uh, or the post office or anything like that. Um, no line item integration, so you're really only seeing basically the header info coming into those platforms. No third party applications uh, for inventory control um, are offered through ShipGear. Uh, no rate shopping, which is a big uh, highlight of Starship. Um, so you can't rate shop different service levels um, in ShipGear. And then also batch processing is not available. However, on the Starship side, you can see the list is a lot bigger. Um, we do utilize our own user interface, so WorldShip and Ship Manager would go away. Um, it allows you to basically process uh, parcel labels, but also process LTL bill of ladings, as well as any international documents you might be processing today. Um, we do offer discounted rates with the post office, um, so um, if that's something of interest, we'll go more detail into that when I get into uh, a few slides here later. <clears throat> We also pull in all the line items in from uh, QuickBooks. So all your sales orders with the multiple line items, um, those will all appear inside of Starship to allow you to define item to box detail if you prefer. Um, we allow for international shipping. So because we have all your line items, we're allowed to basically store that information into side, inside of Starship and then have the ability to uh, process the um, SLIs, the commercial invoices, the NAFTA certificates and so on. Uh, we also work with um, EDI providers such as True Commerce, SBS Commerce, um, those solutions as well to help process the ASN along with your 128 labels if you're working with big box retail. 
Um, we have um, integrations with Fishbowl and Activate, um, which are third-party applications for um, uh, WMS or inventory control. So if uh, any of you are looking into those type of solutions, um, we are holding a Fishbowl webinar next Thursday, um, and I'll have more information on that at the end of the presentation as well. We do offer rate shopping. So if you do have licensed carriers inside of Starship, um, you do have the ability to rate shop amongst all your carriers you're licensed with, and I'll show you more of that in the demo as we go forward. And then we also have the ability to batch process your shipments. So instead of processing one by one, we can batch process as needed and allow you to ship as many packages together um, as you wish. And then last but not least, we do have uh, multiple e-commerce platforms that we work with, uh, but not only can we write back to QuickBooks, but we can also talk more in detail about the e-commerce extensions and how we can update your orders inside of your e-commerce uh, marketplaces you're working with today. So as we talked about um, post office a little earlier, um, I wanna kind of address a few things you know, as we go forward. So for those of you who are using ShipGear today, um, you don't really have the ability to work with the post office inside of ShipGear, um, but Starship does give you that capability, and we do include the modules part of your license. Um, but really where the post office comes into play are for those um, shipments really under 20 pounds. Um, and I highlight the accessorials because everyone sort of gets um, caught up in the increases every year. Um, and really what I want to bring to everyone's attention is all the accessorial fees that may be applicable that we sometimes may overlook. So like your delivery area surcharges, your residential fees, your fuel surcharges. This is where post office can really maybe be an option for you, especially if you have shipments say under 20 pounds. Um, we do work with a third party um, partner called Visible Supply Chain, um, in which can work with you in showing you a detailed analysis of potential savings that can be had by moving any business over to post office. Um, if you are getting hit with those type of accessorials. So you can see some of these here are astronomical in a sense that um, you could you know, impact your bottom line at the end of the year. The next slide here really just kind of highlights that slide. So you can see here with FedEx and UPS, the increases in the residential delivery surcharges, whereas the post office doesn't have any that apply. Um, so again, it could be some substantial savings. Um, we do supply you with CPP pricing um, with the post office. Um, again, that is offered through our partnership with Visible Supply Chain and Pitney Bowes. Um, so again, if this is of an interest, um, please inquire with us after the webinar um, or we'll follow up with you as well to see if it's something you wanna you know, follow through with and take advantage of the module. And then one other slide I have that kind of highlights dimensional weight because it's such a big you know, portion of what we see today. Um, really those shippers who might be shipping lightweight product, putting them in larger box sizes and the impact that you know, it could have on your bottom line. But you can see here just an example that we have, you know, kind of something with teddy bear you know, that weighs 20 ounces that's rounded up to two pounds. But you can see if this was shipped with the post office, this would have costed you $9.97 versus say 1804 with FedEx. So, you know, roughly say 50% savings um, just on one package that, you know, sometimes we just think it can get there um, quicker with FedEx or UPS. But in the next slide here, you'll see that's not the case, you know, because priority mail will get there by a half day faster than a typical UPS or FedEx uh, service. Um, again, it is a one to three day type of service. There is no guarantee technically. Um, but it is a one to three day service with priority mail. Um, there are no hidden surcharges uh, with the post office. Um, so again, we also offer free returns for priority mail and first class, uh, as well as free packaging for priority mail shipments as well. So again, if the post office is something that you wanna take advantage of, it is one of the key features that you would get with Starship over what you might be using with ShipGear. So a little bit about Starship. So really we integrate with many different ERP platforms, e-commerce integrations as we spoke to. Um, we also have um, the ability to mention earlier the LTL and parcel um, processing. Um, so we do have about two dozen different carrier integrations that we work with. Um, and then we also allow for the LTL and parcel. And then we also allow for custom rules. So we have something called freight rules and ship via rules that are inside of Starship that allows you to add additional handling that allows you to do rate shop scenarios behind the scenes, um, that allows you to specify by customer name, 
um, basically on how it's you know going to be shipped um, or if there's a specific rule that needs to apply to a certain recipient um, those can all be set inside of Starship so there's no more manual um, entry on the back end in QuickBooks uh, for yourselves um, and then we talked a little bit about the WMS integration um, this will go into a little bit more um, in detail, but this is where Activate or Fishbowl can kind of tie in with QuickBooks um, for your invoicing, um, but we have the ability to pull your sales orders out of those applications and bring those into Starship and process the labels and then have you invoice through QuickBooks that way. And last but not least, the ability to do EDI um, type of shipments that you don't have today in ShipGear um, to work with the true commerces of the world, the SBS commerces, um, and the ability to help generate those ASNs and give you a seamless automated workflow um, and what that would look like. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, in the two workflows I have set up for everyone to show. Um, the first workflow is going to kind of go into that rate shopping with uh, say UPS versus say post office. And the second workflow is going to kind of go more into the LTL and the international um, processing. Um, it seems to be a big hot button right now with international and LTL. So I thought we'd kind of go through that a little bit in detail, but really kind of highlighting the international processing. Again, we have the ability of printing your commercial invoices, your SLIs, your NAFTA certificate of origin, um, along with, um, we also support your electronic um, trade documents, um, along with your UPS paperless billing options that the both FedEx and UPS support. And then one other key feature that Starship can do for you is your ACE integration um, if you have commodities valued over $2,500. So we can flow all the information in from Starship to the ACE website, have you process your uh, ITN number, and get that back into Starship seamlessly as well. And then I mentioned here kind of the workflow and how what Starship can do. So Starship's really sitting in the middle between these applications um, and basically can flow information, say, from a fishbowl or an activate. Um, WMS platform, and then also work in conjunction with, say, a True Commerce or an SBS Commerce from an EDI perspective as well. And then um, this is just a list of carriers that we work with. Again, I mentioned we have about two dozen different carriers, both regional, nationwide carriers. Um, if you do not see your carrier on here that you might use today, um, it doesn't mean we can't work with you. We also do offer a manual BOL module. Um, in which basically um, can help automate your BOL, have your pro number put back into QuickBooks, um, but the only thing it won't do is be able to do any rating for yourselves. Um, but again, we can simply help automate the bill lading process for you um, if it is a regional carrier or national carrier we don't work with today. And then last but not least here, we do um, have different e-commerce platforms I mentioned earlier. The ones on the left um, are all ones that are out in production. Um, so if any of these uh, shopping carts or marketplaces you're working with today, please inquire with us on how we can kind of show you the workflow on what that would look like. Um, the ones on the right are ones that are currently in development or about to be released and go into beta testing. Um, so again, and there's a couple more here that I haven't put on here. One being Press the Shop um, is another one that's about to come out. Um, and then there's a couple others as well that our development team is finishing up as well. Okay, so let me get out of here. Let me jump over to my demo. And we'll get into the demo for everyone. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to start in QuickBooks, and I'm going to pull up a simple order number um, to start with. And as I mentioned, I have two different workflows to review with everyone. The first being our parcel workflow. Um, kind of the main difference is what you see today from a shift gear perspective versus a Starship. Um, so really in QuickBooks, we have our simple sales order here with the two line items. So in shift gear, you're only going to see basically this information here under the ship to being translated into world ship or ship manager and be brought in along with the ship via. With Starship, we're going to not only bring in this information, but we're also going to pull in your two line items along with all the associated information. So it's values, um, it's weight, it's description, it's SKU number, and you'll see all that in Starship as I bring this in. So I'm just going to go ahead and just minimize that here. Let's close that actually. <clears throat> okay, so a couple different things. So this is what you would be using instead of WorldShip or um, Ship Manager. So this is Starship. 
So basically, you have a couple different ways of importing your order or pulling in your order, I should say, in, uh, into Starship. So one being if your pick ticket or pack list is barcoded, you could scan that in using a wedge type scanner. You could simply type in your order number or you could look up your order number by using this lookup field. You could set various filters um, if you prefer with dates, customer name, you can sort by any of these column headers here. But if you simply know your order number, um, you can simply look for it, load your document. It will pull in your uh, order from QuickBooks along with all its header info information we mentioned before. So the ship via was brought in by UPS ground, um, it's billing prepaid, um, the sender information is coming in as well. You do have the ability to use multiple sender IDs. Um, so we can always map to a bill to field, for instance. So if you are drop shipping, we can set those up for you as well. So it reflects a different customer name other than yourself. Um, and then the recipient information was brought in as well. And we also have done an address validation for you to verify that the address is a commercial location versus residential, um, along with um, the street address being correct. And that's what this green checkbox is telling us. If it was an incorrect address, another window would have populated, offering you another suggestion to choose or ignore um, if you prefer that. Um, down below is basically where we have all your sale, the line items from the sales order. So you remember, Remember before we did have the electrical cord along with the pool cover. Um, so we have those two items here um, at one pound and three pounds. But if I click on one of these, um, you'll notice all of those other um, details have been brought in as well. Your item number from QuickBooks is brought in, your description was brought in along with its unit value and unit weight. Um, and then also from an LTL perspective, we also have the ability to store information such as your NMFC code, your class information, your description, um, as well, along with your um, international information, which I'll show you on the next uh, workflow I do as well. Um, if you were to um, back order any shipments, you do have the ability to back order here. So you could, if I had two units on this um, to be shipped, I could make this one. Um, it would back order um, and be able to allow you to ship that one unit. Uh, the only issue is in QuickBooks, it doesn't allow you to uh, uh, back order anything. That would have to be a manual process on your side. So as we move along, um, under the rate shop scenario here, um, you can see it's going to be basically brought in by your ship via. So it will automatically come in UPS ground because that's how it was brought in. But if you did want to do a quick rate shop, you could hit shop all. You could hit this green dollar sign here, your preference, whichever is easier. And basically what this is gonna go out and do is pull all your negotiated rates for your licensed carriers. Um, so it's not gonna show you every carrier we work with. It's only gonna show you what you have on your current license. Um, but this is a great way if you are interested in say maybe a post office could be a better solution for some of your lighter weight shipments. This could be a great way to check those rates on one screen. So you can kind of do a, a, a sort by, if you click on this charges, you can sort by that column and you can see right away if I look at my priority mail rate, that's gonna be $7.09, whereas UPS ground is gonna be $9.06. So right away, I know that, you know, I'm gonna get my order there by, you know, 4.20 on Friday tomorrow, versus with UPS, I'm gonna get there on Tuesday, and I'm gonna get it there for $2 less expensive. So why not do that? So if I wanted to, I can simply click this priority mail. You'll notice basically that has changed over to priority mail and billing to my account. I don't have to re-import that whole order over again. Okay, so basically, if I want to go ahead and ship and process that, I can. Um, but for all intents and purposes, I'm just going to bring that back into UPS. <clears throat> I can make this simple. So if I'm ready to go ahead and ship and process, I can hit F5 or hit this icon here and go ahead and ship and process this um, this order. So what, one thing you'll see here, it's going to basically, we have this set tool we call our smart label. Our smart label is what we've uh, created internally. Um, it's an eight and a half by 11 um, type of label. This is a four by six die cut. So this would peel right off for yourself. Put this right onto your box. This is your pack list. Um, so you can see all your items from your um, QuickBooks are on here, um, along with how many they ordered, how many were shipped, along with its order number as well. So you can customize this as best as you want. So you can put in your um, you know, logos, 
Uh, you could make this as colorful. Uh, we give you the full template designer to make this look and feel how you want to. So as this does its right back, the right back is seamless, um, kind of like it is in ship gear. So if I go ahead and pull that order back up in QuickBooks for you, you will see that UPS ground along with its tracking number is already there, along with its associated cost. So again, we do have the ability of turning off, say, tracking number right back or a cost right back. So you can turn those off if you prefer, um, but those are what the standard right back would look like um, if you were to use UPS, for instance. <clears throat> okay, so as we move on here, oops, sorry about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the second workflow I've created. Um, so same thing on the LTL front. Um, we basically have um, your um, same thing. You would load your document in. Um, this order I have coming in XBO, uh, but this is also now going international. So a couple different things have changed here um, as far as the workflow goes and kind of highlight. So one thing you'll notice right at the bottom here, we have a palette. I do have two boxes going on my palette. And I've also defined these items, whereas before I just had everything import into one box. I have defined two different items to be put into two different boxes. Um, so you can do that, or you can have everything import into one box if that is easier for your shipper um, to do that. Um, but again, it's not necessary to define specific items to box um, inside of Starship. Um, the other thing that has opened up here as well, um, we talked about the line item, but your international tab is now a new feature here in, in the international tab. Um, but you do have um, where you can specify broker information, you can specify duty and tax information and who's gonna be responsible for paying that. Um, but the other thing, because we have your unit values of your items, we that is help building our commercial invoice. So your total value is reflected here as well. And that's what's gonna be placed in your commercial invoice when we print this order. On the line item itself, you'll notice one thing here. Um, we can also store your Schedule B number per each item number. So all these have specific um, Schedule B numbers. So those you don't have to enter every single time. So once you store them the first time, it's automatically saved along with any sort of certificate of origin information. Um, so if you click in here, you can see basically all of your information is stored as well. Okay. Um, so again, if you were interested in doing a rate shop, you can go ahead and perform a rate shop. It's the same workflow as you just saw before, um, where you can change or choose your lowest expensive or your least expensive carrier. Um, and then you can just ship and process this order if you're ready. So if I go ahead and ship and process this order, um, I'm basically going to get a few different documents here. So the first, we have two sets of bill of lading, your choice to use whichever one you want. This is our own, which you can customize as best as you like. So you can remove, you can add fields, um, but you'll notice here all the information here is stored, um, put in uh, your constant information, your NMFC code, your class, your weight, along with its description, um, along with the pro number that we return back from the API from XBO is also put on the bill of lading. You also have the ability to get the XBO bill of lading. Not all carriers support um, the bill of lading return, so that's why we have our own for those carriers that we don't get a return back. Um, but XBO is one of those carriers that do return their own. So it's a little bit more colorful um, and easier, I feel like, you know, uh, on the eyes. <clears throat> but here you can see basically everything that you need um, to see, you know, that you saw in the other bill of lading. Then you have your commercial invoice. Your commercial invoice prints a seamlessly right behind your bill of lading. Um, so again, all your Schedule B information, um, your description, country of origin, the value, all of that is on here. And if you remember, we saw that value of 679 before, that's the invoice total that's going for customs. And again, this can be all um, done electronically with FedEx and UPS as well. And then you have your NAFTA certificate, you know, that's here as well. So all those same items are on this um, document for your information. Okay, so if I pull up QuickBooks here and kind of go show you that right back, you'll notice here now for LTL, we put the carrier name along with its appropriate tracking number. 
um, and then again within its associated cost. <clears throat> so those are the two workflows inside of Starship, um, those really high level overviews of both workflows. Um, so if any of those are something that you want more information on, um, at the end of this, I will have a poll up. Just please feel free to mark that you're interested in learning more about those workflows. Um, and myself or Moses can be reaching out to you to kind of do more inquiry with you and kind of go through more detail of a demo if you're interested. A couple of the different tools that um, you do receive um, with um, Starship are, one is our dashboard view. So dashboard doesn't require any additional user seats. Um, you can load this on as many computers as you like, have as many users logged in, uh, but from a um, uh, customer service uh, perspective, it is a great way to um, track shipments, uh, do some rate quoting if you prefer to do rate quoting through here. Um, it is tied to all the client information that I was just in um, before. Um, so again, you have analytical reports you can look at. Um, but you also have a bunch of different other reports you can have access for different types of meetings um, or just for your own um, information as well <clears throat> but in here if you wanted to go simply track a shipment um, the nice thing about this because we're a multi-mode multi-carrier platform you don't have to worry about the actual tracking number you can simply go through any of these fields so if you know the uh, customer id or the po number or the contact name you can simply enter that right in here you would hit okay and then basically you can basically uh, pull up this information, which would show up here. Um, so it'll give you everything from what carrier has the information uh, to what service is being shipped by. So here you'll see this was our UPS shipment we just recently have done. Um, so you can see it went by UPS ground. It gives you who the recipient information is. It also breaks down what line items. So from a QA perspective, you can say, okay, yes, there was only two items in that shipment, or no, there was three items, but for some reason only two were showing up. So immediately you know that you have an issue with the shipment if the customer is calling in. Um, it also breaks down the charges associated to that shipment. Um, so you have that information along with any other options that were there. You also would get a proof of delivery. Um, this is grayed out because I am in a test environment, but in a production environment, this would be um, available for you to see who signed for the package as well. These are just different analytical reports. So you can kind of get an idea of you know, what carriers um, yeah, you're using currently, how your shipments are being diversified. So here you can kind of just click on any one of these colors. And then if you want any further information, you can click again into one of these bar graphs and it'll show you all your shipments you've done with FedEx, for instance, um, for that particular time period. And then if you're also using multiple users um, in your uh, warehouse where they're processing shipments, this will kind of give you an idea of where, uh, who's doing most of the work, is it being evenly distributed? Um, but again, you can see here, I have two that are somewhat busy, but then I have one that's being somewhat non-productive, um, whereas I can address that in my workflow and kind of either put more work on this additional user, or maybe we just shut down that whole workstation altogether because it's not needed. And then we have a bunch of different reports um, from anything from address correction to late deliveries um, to basically applied versus contracted report, which basically means how much of the, is the carrier charging you versus how much are you charging your customer. Um, so that's a great report and one of my favorites uh, that we offer. Uh, and then we also have other reports that you can go into just looking at just simple shipment history. Uh, but this, these are all crystal-based reports, can be downloaded in PDF or Excel, uh, whichever you prefer. And then the last tool that we offer um, is our um, e-notify tool. Um, so our e-notify tool is a totally personable, personalized tool that we offer. Um, so you can make these templates look and feel how you wish, uh, but they're out there for you to send these notifications to your customer of a pending shipment that's on its way. Um, but you'll notice here, um, let me just pull up this one that we just did here. Um, so you'll notice here, you can put like your company logo, for instance, um, the line items, um, how many were ordered. Again, you can put whatever information um, that is available through Starship on this email template that you're going to send out to your customer um, along with it, say, its tracking number. The tracking number, by the way, is a hyperlink. So if you were to click on this, it would go out to, say, the UPS website um, for them to be able to track their shipment on, them, on their own. Um, and then we can also use it as a marketing tool where we can put in, they say, a coupon code 
um, to draw them back to your website for a future sale um, down the road. But it's a great way, other than the simple, um, you know, carrier email notifications that go out that are black and white in a sense, this can be more colorful to your customer and kind of write more of a thank you personalized message um, thanking for the order. Okay, so that concludes kind of what I wanted to review today. Um, so we have this set for an hour. So we're about a half hour in. So I am gonna go ahead and um, open this up to some questions here. Um, but before I do that, um, I am going to open up a poll um, so I can kind of um, gauge interest on everyone's part on what they like to get more information on so we can follow up with those appropriate parties here in the next few days. So let me go ahead and launch that poll. And I'll keep this open here. All right, so the poll should be opening. So let me get to some questions um, here as we get them in. Uh, and again, if you have a question, please raise your hand um, and jot down your question in the question pane, and we'll do our best here to answer the questions that are coming in. <clears throat> so our first question we have in here um, is, can you do this from an invoice or does it have to be from a sales order? Um, so you have a couple, good question, Joanne. Thank you for asking that. So you can do that from three different documents. So you can import your um, sales order, uh, you can import the invoice, or you can import your sales receipt. Um, so those three different documents can be brought in into Starship um, to your preference. So thank you for the question. Uh, next question here coming in, can you convert the sales order into invoice after shipping? Um, unfortunately, uh, QuickBooks is limited on its write back and it does not allow for the sales order to be created into its own invoice. Um, that is a QuickBooks limitation that we cannot uh, do unfortunately at the moment. Um, so unfortunately, if we do update the sales order, you would have to go in and actually create the invoice yourself. But good question, thank you for that. So questions come in, um, what is the cost of Starship? Um, so again, we can follow up with you on that. Um, we are running a special promotion uh, for those who registered and attended today. Um, so stay tuned for the follow-up email um, on what that special promotion is gonna be. Um, but we are offering um, a discount up to $745 on the uh, overall package price. So uh, stay tuned for that, but we can follow up with you on the exact uh, cost of Starship for yourself. But it's, it varies because um, it does, it's based around how many carriers as well as how many seats and locations you do have. So we can definitely follow up with you to get more information from you after this call. So again, if you do have additional questions, please raise your hand um, along with um, and then in the question pane, you can jot down your uh, questions there as well. If you change method of shipping, does that write back? Yes, it does still write back. Um, thanks, Michael, for the question. Um, so if you do get into the rate shop and you see, say, FedEx might be less expensive than UPS uh, or vice versa, um, and you choose to use that other carrier, it will still write back the appropriate carrier you uh, shipped it with along with its associated tracking number. Uh, another question has come in, can we use with regional carriers? Um, so the regional carriers that we work with um, we're on that list, uh, but we can follow up with you um, here, Doug, as well, um, to find out exactly 
uh, which carries. But if we don't work with them or have a direct integration, we could use our bill of lading module, um, which allows you to get the uh, pro number back into QuickBooks from that carrier. It just won't be able to rate shop inside of Starship, unfortunately. Can the e-notify uh, have a specific template created? And when a sales order is created, you then have templates to choose from. And then, and when the sales order is created, it auto-populates auto the template with items on back order, basically taking care of creating the sales order and notification email all at once. Um, so good question. Um, so you can create um, a specific template. Um, so you've got multiple templates for different customers. Um, number one, I need notify, um, and then basically, and have and choose to choose from. And when the sales order is created, it auto populates the template. So it's going to be set to that specific sales order. So if that sales order is set to a specific customer, um, which it will be, then that that template is going to be the one that's going to be sent out uh, with the notification of the tracking information and all that as well. Um, we could attach other documents. Um, to the e-notify as well, um, that are basically anything that Starship uh, itself can handle. Um, so we can it, attach like the commercial invoices, um, sales, or any of those documents can be attached to that uh, notification email going out as well. So I hope I answered your question uh, there, Joe, but we can follow back up with you and make sure we address that. Uh, is there a min package amount for post office to pick up daily? Uh, no, there is not. Um, there is no minimum pack, uh, pickup uh, requirements. Uh, the Starship notify post office when we have a package ready if we don't have a daily pickup. Um, so we do not notify the post office um, uh, electronically. Um, so that's something you would have to notify them of a pickup. Um, or you can schedule a daily pickup. Uh, there is no additional fees uh, for that to happen. Um, so again, that's something you can speak with them uh, regarding, uh, or we could put you in touch with our third party um, at Visible to learn more about that if you want to. Um, how are the item weights and how are the item weights saved inside of Starship? Um, so basically, we have those mapped to a specific field inside of QuickBooks um, is one way. Uh, the other way, if you don't want to have those mapped, uh, you can basically uh, type those in, and as soon as you type them in, we're going to save them as soon as you ship that item um, for next time. Um, so those are ways you can basically save those, but those are in the inventory database, uh, which basically is, just to show you quickly, there is in the whole inventory database here. So if you basically go into, actually, I don't think you're going to be able to see this. Let me, I'm going to shut down the poll because I think a lot of you have responded. So let me just close that down. Okay. Um, so let me bring up. So here's basically where all your unit weights can be stored inside of Starship here under its own item number. Again, you can have that mapped or you can simply type that in and that'll be saved the first time you ship it. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's see, other questions. Do we have to create an account for specific LTL to get rate quotes or does Starship create that rate quote based on the relationship with each carrier? So Starship, um, so we do not, um, we're not a 3PL ourselves. So we don't have negotiated rates with any of the uh, LTL providers or parcel carriers. Um, so you would have to negotiate those rates yourself. Um, and we can load your account credentials into Starship um, and then basically show your rates, what you've negotiated with those carriers. We do work with one third party um, provider today um, called FreightQuote.com. Um, so we could take advantage of their rates as well inside of Starship. Uh, we are looking to add another third party here this uh, next few months, um, and then potentially another couple 3PLs um, options next year in 2019. How customizable is a special label with packing slip? Can the pack slip be blind? Where, uh, where can the labels be purchased? Um, okay, so um, the packing slip, um, so I think the question is regarding 
um, being blind, meaning um, a different sender, I think, uh, Steph, if you can clarify that. Um, or if you're not looking to put the pack slip inside the box, I'm not sure. Um, but again, whatever your sender ID is set to is what's going to show up on the pack slip itself under the shipper. Um, and then where can the labels be purchased? Uh, the labels can be purchased. We do have a couple of vendors we work with. Um, we work with onlinelabels.com. We also work with um, the uh, Chicago Tag and Label or two that just come to mind off the top of my head that do sell these type of labels that you can inquire with. Yes, blind meaning then yes, the pack slip is going to show up with the sender ID is showing up on the actual carrier label. So your your customer's name um, will show up um, as a sender versus yourself. So if you're doing labels, can regular labels be used? You could also, I showed you a smart label. If you don't want to do a smart label and want to do a thermal label like a four by six, you could have um, the regular label print at a thermal printer, and you can also have your pack list print to a thermal printer as well, um, as long as everything would fit um, onto a standard thermal packing list. Um, so that is absolutely uh, doable as well. How about blind pack list as in no pricing is showing? Um, so you do have the ability to remove um, information off the pack list. So if you don't want your um, values to show um, in on the pack list, you do have that ability to remove those um, from that document. Any other questions? Great questions so far. So thank you everyone for um, asking. Um, but I'll leave it open here for another minute. Um, can the packing list be printed to the standard printer? Um, so you can print to a laser printer as well. That can be done. Um, and you can have your label, uh, your carrier label print to a thermal printer or a laser printer, um, your option. All right, well, I think that is all the questions. Um, so I appreciate everyone voting on the poll. Um, I appreciate the questions. Um, let me just um, sort of end it with uh, this here. So, so basically here, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we do have a new, another webinar coming up next Thursday at two Eastern. Um, if you go to our website, www.vtechnologies.com, under webinars, you'll see the information for our fishbowl webinar. So if you are interested in inventory control on how that can work with QuickBooks and automate your pick, pack, and ship process, um, so if you do have intentions of looking at fishbowl in the future or maybe in the immediate uh, future, um, please join us at 2 Eastern next Thursday, uh, and we will run through that integration and kind of the differences that you've seen maybe today uh, versus what Fishbowl can offer uh, going forward. So I think we have a couple questions. Let me just see before I close out here. Um, so <clears throat> the dashboard unfortunately cannot be accessed remotely. Um, so the dashboard is tied, you know, to the client itself. Um, so it basically would be, um, you know, it won't be able to be accessed on a mobile application or um, uh, remotely on another uh, PC because everything's server client based. <clears throat> Any way to download this from my boss? Uh, yes, you will all get a recording of this webinar. Um, so stay tuned for that along with the special promotion we're offering um, for everyone. So that should be out, uh, if not today, by tomorrow, you should all receive the recording of the webinar so you can watch it at your leisure or pass it amongst uh, the different users that weren't able to join us today. All right, well, I appreciate everyone joining um, and we will definitely follow up with those um, uh, that have expressed interest on different topics. 
Uh, but again, I appreciate everyone's time this afternoon, and we'll all see you hopefully next Thursday, or we'll speak to you soon. Thank you for joining, and have a great day.